If God could speak, she sound a lot like me. She drag her A's and she drop her G's. She leave the D behind, all pun intended. <laughs> Trading the A, E, and the I for the Y because it's flyer. If you don't know how to do it, you're a non-proprietor. I'm styling and profiling with these words. I'm trying to spit some fire. See, they tell me I'm a gangster. I got a lot of bass in my voice. Sojourner Truth and Cardi B in my makeup. See, there's no Webster Dictionary that can correct this. No standard English translation for the stories I have to tell. So you're going to have to hold that get out bell because I'm already too woke. So what's poppin', Ted? What's really good? You trying to tell me you don't understand me because I'm from the hood? That can't be true. When I play Migos, I bump along too. Rapping every word, even a forbidden fruit, so you gonna have to learn to feel me. Mixing, mixing letters, making words like alchemy. See, language is a proxy for my identity. So let my history flow. Deep fried jazz, hip hop, and soul. Long hair weaves. Acrylics and cornrows, segregation and slavery, reconstruction and emancipation, black disassociation, white glorification. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Okay. <laughs> Listen to me when I say this closely. We've been too accommodating, too apologetic. Curating our identities to fit into your politics, but that's done. Let me ask you a question. When do I get to walk in the world to be authentic? Or are you going to keep mapping my culture on the white bodies for aesthetic? See, y'all tell me the language and the culture I learn at home puts me at risk. But boy, I know you lying, because I done been to college and back. Look at where we at to the TED stage and beyond black girl overflow. Overflow with your ghetto butt. Make sure you pull out a juxtaposition just to flex though, like, hello. My name's Naya, and I'm here to talk to y'all about code switching. <laughs> oh. How is everybody today? Good. So I'm here to talk to you about code switching, which is the practice of alternating between two languages or dialects in the same conversation or sentence like I just did, exhibit A. So, does anybody in here code switch? Okay, so y'all feel me. So, I learned to code switch about the summer of 2003. I was nine years old, and I was going to Fresh Air Fun camp. It was the first time, you been to Fresh Air Fun? I see. <laughs> it's the first time I ever been away from home and away from my mom. So the point of Fresh Air Fund is to bus inner city black and brown kids to rural and suburban areas along the East Coast in Canada. I never been outside of New York City, never been along the East Coast or Canada. So I was nervous. I was petrified, honestly, since I was shook. But I still did it. Me and my mother spent a long eight summers together and it was time for me to spread my wings. So before you get bused to Massachusetts, Oh, well, that's where I came, sorry. But before you get bused to your host family, you learn basic things about them. Age, sex, race, um, I don't know. Basic things about your family. And I had never been to a white person's house, let alone live in it for two weeks at a time. When I got off the bus, it was a culture shock. But I need to say that my family was really dope. I went back three years, and three years in a row consecu consecutively but at dinner, when we'd have conversation, they'd ask me about my day, and we'd debrief. And they'd say, how was your day? I'm like, it was good, I was chilling. They'd be like, huh? I was like, it was good, I was chilling? <laughs> and they'd be like, huh? And they'd, be, and they'd go on to correct my English. And that went on for seven days until on the eighth day I said nothing. We'd go to local country clubs, and the waiter would walk over and said, can I interest you in a Diet Coke? And I'd say, nah, I'm Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd stand there for about another 30 seconds. He'd be like, can I interest you in a Diet Coke? I'm Gucci. Like, my host mother would run over, and she'd be like, she's a part of the Fresh Air Fun program. And at that moment, I knew what that meant. 
I knew I could not walk in this world and be myself. I would get on the bus, go back to Dykeman where I was raised, and I'd sit in the projects with my friends. And some of them would be like, you sound white. And I'd be like, girl, really? <laughs> but I couldn't code, like, I could not not code switch anymore. It was reflexive. And for the next 10 years of my life, I did it at interviews, debates, debate preps, internships, fellowships, college classrooms, and that was my entire life. In a journalism class once, I hit, once here at Brandeis, my professor was sounding off about her accolades, and I was in the back of the classroom like, girl, go on with your bad self. <laughs> the whole class stopped. My teacher was offended. A dean had to be involved. And I said nothing the rest of the semester. I failed the class, but I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel understood. I never feel understood when I talk. And when I was preparing to do this talk, people asked me, are you scared you're gonna be too ghetto? Sis, I'm G-H-E-T-T-O. I'm ghetto. <laughs> ghetto with an H. I'm ghetto, but I'm also educated. I'm also articulate. I also get it done. So what does that mean? How do we tell marginalized people's stories? How do we tell my story? It don't fit into standard English. There's no Oxford comma after certain words. I be going to the stores correct. <laughs> How do we tell marginalized stories? Now, if you're in the crowd, I want you to ask yourself a question. Do you code switch? And if you do code switch, when do you have to do it? Do you have to do it to survive, or you do it for craps and giggles? Do you do it to be cool, or do you do it to stay alive? I do it to stay alive. I do it to navigate my social spaces. What about you? Ted, thank you for this platform. And thank you for listening. Thank you.